Hi and welcome to a new episode of my channel. Today I'm gonna talk about my new 3 inch quad from GPRC. It's a Signet 3 inch version. I'm just gonna go through the experience I did during the build and the modifications I did on the quad. First let's have a look at the frame itself. There are a few things I really like on this frame. The first thing is, as you can see, there is the possibility to put in two 20mm stacks, so the frame is pretty big. At the rear we have the ESC, the FC and the VTX, it's a stable stack from GPRC, and at the front we have the uh, electronics plate from the FPV cam, which is the Foxier Mix, and on top we have the RC receiver which is in size and weight modified uh, Futaba uh, fast receiver. The video about the size and uh, weight modification you can see in the link above in this video. So in comparison to other 3 inch frames you have really a lot of space in this frame. Two 20 mm stacks and in the back there is enough space for SMA connection for the capacitor and you can also install a beeper in this hole in this 3D printed part as you can see here. I didn't build it in because I will primarily fly uh, small spots and I don't think that I'm gonna use the beeper. What I also didn't built in is the uh, LED which comes with the frame, this is behind this clear uh, 3D printed part but I just didn't install it because there is no need to have an LED in the back of the quad. Another thing I like on this frame is that you have both stacks, both 20mm stacks uh, all butter mounted or soft mounted, that means you have uh, rubber grommets in every uh, hole in the frame so you don't need to care about the stack if your components are soft mounted itself because the whole stacks are soft mounted. So that helps to avoid vibrations, you get the better picture. If you do HD recording like I do it with my Foxy Mix camera which I installed and uh, for me it's always uh, most important target to get clean video out of a quad no matter if I use a GoPro or I go with a uh, combined FPV and HD camera like the Foxy Mix or the Run Cam Swift. The self-adhesive rubber on top of the frame helps to keep the battery in place. Unfortunately it's not a super sticky pad like the Uma Grip or uh, the pads you can get from Banggood. When I put on the battery as you can see it comes off pretty easy and if you have a super grip rubber on top of the frame or uh, on the place on the frame you where you put on your battery, uh, your battery stays in place no matter uh, if you turn it around or shake the quad. But it's not a bad solution. You have two velcros which come with the frame. These keep your battery securely in place. Then let's go through the components I used. But let's start at the front. We have the Foxier Mix camera which can deliver live feed to your goggles and it also can record HD uh, footage with an uh, integrated SD card uh, at 1080p with a max of 60 frames. And the reason why I chose the Foxy Mix instead of Runcam is just because I always used FPV cams from Foxier and I'm pretty happy with the brand. So I'll give it a try and see how good this thing works. One problem is if you go with the Foxier Mix, as you can see I had to install a custom made carbon plate which helps to get the camera in a good position. The problem is the Foxy Mix is a little bit longer so if you install it on the standard hole you have in this uh, aluminium part at the front the lens 
is not covered with the front end of the frame. It's exposed at the front and in case of a crash, because the camera is really the front end of the frame, you will pretty easily damage your uh, lens or perhaps the whole camera. So I built this part to put it a little bit more in the back. One issue you have with this modification that in these edges you touch the frame with your camera. So you don't be able to go through every kind of angle you want to have. This position is around 30 degrees and that's what I'm going to fly. And if you want to have a lower angle, you just have to unscrew the camera and put it in another position and the flat position you can do is maximum 15 degrees or lower or you can go around 30 degrees or higher but something between these 30 and 15 degrees is not possible with this solution but the 30 degrees like I have it here I really like it and I think I'm gonna go with this you can mount it for sure more in the front so you can change your angle as you want to have it but then think about your exposed lens the RC receiver I installed is the modified Futaba fast receiver. This is okay for small spots, but in an older test I figured out that you have a range about 3 to 400 meters. So I'm gonna change this to a FHSS receiver and we will see if I can improve the range because normally my FHSS receivers uh, have a range up to around one kilometer. What I did to protect the uh, SD card to avoid uh, losing them is I just put uh, Velcro around the frame and the plate of the camera and like this you cannot lose your SD card because the SD card sits exactly behind the velcro in this position and a lot of people lose their micro sd cards in case of crashes the sd card comes out and if you are in the open field you have almost no chance to get your micro sd card and your footage back so this is an easy way to protect your sd card then let's have a look at the motors and the props both are the components which are used also on the bind and fly version of this quad so the motor is the CR1206 with 4500 kV and the props are the Emax Avan Mini 3 inch props they are 3024 size and they really work fantastic you get really great footage with these props. Flight footage will come soon. I did already some test flights and I will bring up the footage as soon as possible. A nice feature on the motors is what you get with the motors. This is a bag which included all the screws and as you can see you get some 7mm screws for your props and you get four screws with each motor so you can also lose some of your screws on the field because they are super tiny and it's in they are black colored so pretty easy to lose and you have two sets of screws so that helps to to not get in trouble if you lose one of your screws and then you have uh, five millimeter screws also a set of four for three millimeter arms and you have a four millimeter screw set also four pieces and um, four two millimeter arms so it's really great what you get as screws with these uh, GPRC motors for uh, ESC, FC and VTX solution I decided to go with the stable stack from GPRC it includes a 20 amp PL Heli S ESC, then F4 flight controller with OSD and VTX with maximum 200 milliwatts of output power. One thing at the VTX is a little downside. You have a UFL connector for your uh, pigtail, and this is a pretty weak solution. 
I just mounted and and unscrewed a few antennas and because of the pigtail is moving every time you unscrew and screw on your antenna the UFL connector broke. I know that there are possibilities to glue the pigtail onto the VTX but I don't like glued solution on connectors. The connector has to work as it is and so I decided just to solder the pigtail onto the VTX. Um, what I just figured out that uh, GPRC will come up with a new stable stack with a version 2 and on this you will have 30 amp ESCs and you will have MMCX connector for your pigtail which is a way better solution than the UFL solution we have on this stack now. To connect the battery I changed uh, the XT30 connector to this uh, 3.5 millimeter bullet gold plaques. The reason why I do this is just because it's in my opinion it's the most trusty connection system you can get. They are a bit big for this size of quad but they work great. They sit really tough and for in this case I have 100% sure that my electric connection between the battery and the quad is perfect. With the solution like I did, the risk of creating short circuits is a bit higher than if you use the XT30 or XT60 connector solution. In this case what I did is I took some heat shrink just to avoid short circuits over the SMA connector because you have both connectors separate and like this if you have one already plugged in and the other just uh, loose and if you touch um, the SMA connector with your uh, battery connector you can create a short circuit so that's important if you use a connector solution like this isolate anything that can short circuit which is around your connectors and like this you're sure to avoid any short circuits. As FPV antenna I used the Triumph from TBS and I just put this on because it delivers great picture and that's all. It's a little big for this frame but it works perfect. The connector which comes with the frame is SMA connector so just make sure that you go for SMA antenna if you uh, buy the frame separate and the antenna separate. It's not RP SMA, it's SMA. That's important about the antenna plug. Finally let's have a look at the weight. Here we go with the quad including two velcros to fix the battery. We are at around 150-151 grams. Then for flight battery I tried two different solutions. One is 3S from China Hobby Line, uh, 70C battery and with this battery you're gonna end up at around 235 grams and the other solution I tried is a Swiss brand battery, Swaytronic 700 milliamp battery 4S 75C and this is a little bit lighter and so we end up at around 230-231 and with this weight you're still under this magic limit of 250 grams. For the first test flights I tried better flight 3.5.7 so I updated the FC which comes with 3.5.3 and just used stock pits and added some expo to get it smoother around center stick and I was extremely surprised how smooth it feels, how it handles prop wash, there is really not a lot of prop wash or almost no prop wash at all and I'm really uh, happy how the quad worked without any tuning. So that's all for today for this video, give me a thumb up if you like it, don't forget to subscribe and as always happy flying, bye bye.